In the previous lecture, I gave you the initial value theorem in Z transform, and now I will give you the final value theorem in Z transform. But first, we will revise the final value theorem we studied in Laplace transform. Let's say there is a continuous time signal Ft, and this continuous time signal is having the corresponding Laplace transform as Fs. Now, the final value of Ft, which is limit t tending to infinity Ft, or we can write F infinity, is equal to S multiplied to Laplace transform Fs, S multiplied to Laplace transform Fs when limit S is tending to zero. So when you calculate limit S tending to zero SFS, you will have the final value of signal Ft, which is F infinity. And this is known as the final value theorem in Laplace transform. But there are two conditions which must be satisfied in order to use the final value theorem. And condition number one says the final value theorem is only applicable when ft is equal to zero for all the values of t which are less than zero. And the second condition says that function sfs must have all the poles in the left half of the s plane. And when no ROC is given along with Laplace transform fs, we assume condition number one is satisfied. And we have solved many examples using the final value theorem. So we already know about all these stuffs. This was just a revision. And now we will move on to the final value theorem in Z transform. Let's say we have a discrete time signal Xn and this discrete time signal is having the corresponding z transform equal to xz then the final value of signal xn which is limit n tending to infinity xn or we can write x infinity equal to 1 minus z power minus 1 multiplied to z transform xz when limit z is tending to 1. So this is known as the final value theorem in z transform. And now when you compare this with this, you will find we don't have z tending to 0. Like here we have s tending to 0. And this is one very main difference. Here we have z tending to 1. And also here we have sfs, but here we don't have z x z. We don't have this, we have 1 minus z power minus 1 multiplied to xz. So remember the final value theorem and the proof of final value theorem in z transform is not required in this course. So you have to remember it as it is. Now we will move on to the conditions. Condition number 1 says final value theorem in z transform is only applicable when xn is equal to 0 for all the values of n which are less than 0. And when the region of convergence is not given along with the z transform, ROC is not given, then we assume this condition is satisfied. And the second condition is different from the second condition we are having here. In place of SFS, we have 1 minus z power minus 1 x z and the poles of this function should lie inside unit circle in z plane and here the poles should lie in the left half of the s plane so focus on the difference and it will help you remember the condition now we will quickly solve one example question so that we can have a better hold of the final value theorem in Z transform. Here in this question, we are having CZ equal to 1 Z power minus 1, 1 minus Z power minus 4, 
divided by 4 1 minus z power minus 1 square and we are required to calculate the final value this means we can use the final value theorem but again we have to be cautious about the conditions here we will first check the condition and then only we can apply the final value theorem so in the solution in the solution we are having a discrete time signal cn and the discrete time signal cn is having the z transform equal to cz and it is equal to z power minus 1 inside the bracket 1 minus z power minus 4 divided by 4 times 1 minus z power minus 1 square and we are required to calculate c infinity cn we need to calculate when n is equal to infinity this means we are required to calculate c infinity and the question is taken from gate 1999 electronics and communication paper so let us move on to the conditions we are having as you can see that along with z transform no roc is given therefore we will assume condition number one is satisfied now we will check the condition number two and for that we are first required to find out the function 1 minus z power minus 1 x z here we have c z in place of x z so we will find out 1 minus z power minus 1 c z so let us multiply 1 minus z power minus 1 to this z power minus 1 1 minus z power minus 4 in the denominator we have 4 times 1 minus z power minus 1 square and we can write 1 minus z power minus 4 equal to 1 plus z power minus 2 multiplied to 1 minus z power minus 2 and further we can write 1 minus z power minus 2 as 1 plus z power minus 1 multiplied to 1 minus z power minus 1 so finally we can write 1 plus z power minus 2 multiplied to 1 plus z power minus 1 multiplied to 1 minus z power minus 1 in place of 1 minus z power minus 4 so in the next step we will make this change and we will have 1 minus z power minus 1 this one i have written as it is then we have z power minus 1 and then we have 1 plus z power minus 2 multiplied to 1 plus z power minus 1 multiplied to 1 minus z power minus 1 and in the denominator we have 4 multiplied to 1 minus z power minus 1 square we have 1 minus z power minus 1 two times in the numerator and they are multiplied therefore these two will be cancelled out by 1 minus z power minus 1 square in the denominator so finally we are getting 1 minus z power minus 1 multiplied to c z equal to z power minus 1 multiplied to 1 plus z minus 2 multiplied to 1 plus z minus 1 divided by 4 z power minus 1 we can write as 1 over z so we have 4 z in the denominator and from here we can say that z is equal to 0 is our pole and when you look at the condition number 2 it says the pole of this function should be inside the unit circle and z equal to 0 will be inside the unit circle so condition number 2 is also satisfied and therefore we can use the final value theorem now according to final value theorem c infinity will be equal to limit z tending to 1 1 minus z power minus 1 c z 
and we have calculated 1 minus z power minus 1 cz equal to this so we can write c infinity is equal to limit z tending to 1 1 plus z power minus 2 1 plus z power minus 1 divided by 4z now when you put z equal to 1 you will have 2 multiplied to 2 divided by 4 which will give you 1 and when you look at the 4 options you will find option C is the correct option.